So today's lecture is going to be on advanced UI techniques. And it's going to leave a little bit different lecture than we've done in the past. And so I'd actually like to start this lecture off by showing you some different examples of UI in the real world. So let's go through a couple pictures. So here's one that was taken at a gas station. And now again, obviously you can see that it's worn down, but the difference in quality that the user just accepts looking at this Right? I mean, you can just see how much better this looks than this, and it's been worn down. Well, this is analogous to just like HTML pages or any of our applications. I think it's just what Windows Forms looks like compared to WPF. So over time, we need to revamp our UIs to get more modern looks. So here's one that was taken in an elevator, and just think about the UI design here. Now, when someone created this elevator panel, they knew you know the concourse they knew what that meant but that was also for gates and the train that's all where the baggage stop is and so you can see it was by bad design that they've now had to just sort of slap on some updates to this interface and again a lot of applications end up doing something like this and it ends up looking just this bad but in software so here's another example what we use all the time when getting gas and I'm sure you've had this where it says press some sort of key, like press the enter key, right? Well, okay, if this is something that a user has to do every single time, then why is the enter key just sort of hidden down here? Where all these other buttons that are probably almost never used, you know, they're big and they're blue and they're easy to use. Well, what about something like this instead? This should be make a lot more sense where enter my zip code and, and there's the accept button, right? There's that last button where I press enter. So you can see how much easier and effective just by changing the layout of your UI can be and direct the user's attention, right? You notice enter and they say, okay, just imagine your eye says press enter when done. Okay, and your eye comes down and sure enough, there it is. There's the enter button. So another example of UI. Now again, it's a chart, but trying to match up these colors as a user I mean, you're making the user do all the work for UI, where you could change it to something like this, where it's very clear, you know, which piece of the pie goes to which example. So here's an example for tables. Generally, table, this option down here is probably the best example where you want the text to pop out, not the borders like on this one. I mean, this one's probably okay, but this one's probably best. Because again, we care about the data. What we don't care about is the borders around the outside. So here's one that I took recently where I was at my doctor's office and I wanted to, I was on the third floor and I wanted to go down to the first floor. So try to go down to the first floor. Click the button. I'll tell you what, I clicked this button over and over again before I then realized that it was star and main. Now mind you, so many people did this and got so confused, they actually printed out and laminated a piece of paper that said, oh, M, that's for main level. Now again, I figured it out pretty fast, but again, it's just it makes perfect sense to the person designing this, but when you're in that elevator and you first walk up and you want to go to one, it just it's kind of a strange layout for 3, 2, B, M, it just is confusing. So on this next slide was a rental car that I rented, and I want you just to turn the volume up. Just so pretend in your mind where you would need to go to turn the volume up. Go for it. Turn the volume up. Can you find it? Can you find it? The music's blaring, you need to turn it up. And so when I rented this car and I had to change the volume, I, I was turning all kinds of buttons before I finally figured it out. It was this one up here. Now again, you, you figure it out eventually, but just notice from the way the UI is, this, this was just terrible sort of an interface in my opinion. Again, there's just no reason that you can't have something that you know it's clear, it just says volume on it. I mean, there's so many ways and just so easy to, to, to change the UI and make this a little bit better. So now I'm going to go to this layout article example that I've given you. And what I want to do is I just want to go through some different examples of ways to create code and, and up, create a more maintainable user interface. So for example, when you run this it just comes up with some different buttons and it's going to show you different way you can just create um, a UI and these are just labels and text boxes but you can see pretty standard just you know first name and it has all this information slightly better example it's really behind the scenes we'll see why that's a slightly better example 
and then a stacked example again just we'll see behind the scenes and then the view which this one is sort of the end all right where it's it's got tabs it's got colors and and, and buttons and themes applied and styles done professionally it looks a lot better so let's take a look at this example code now and so this first one this naive layout you'll notice the reason we don't like this type of layout is we've hard-coded locations and widths and everything for our text boxes and blocks and so it could not be dynamic we, we've hard-coded everything in this example it's something we really want to strive not to do now this example here is slightly better now here you'll notice we're using our grid properly so over here you can see that while we had a grid we weren't really taking advantage of it we we're just hard-coding places within our grid we're over here now we're actually creating rows and columns and then we're setting our text blocks into the appropriate columns and rows so slightly better than before we could also do a stacked approach to our user interface here where we could have this stack panel now again you'll notice we're not hard coding the width and pixels of our controls so it's a little bit better way to do our interface the last way is this customer view example. Now I'm not going to go into exactly how they created all this, but what I wanted to show you is that just by applying a style to our customer layout, that it completely defines, you know, via a style this that we can actually look at that defines, you know, all the visual elements for our code. For example, here it is. And so again, you could have uh, someone who is skilled in their user interface to define all of this. And then again, this is what the coder creates. You apply a single style to it and that turns into this. So almost anything can be done with styles. And, and we'll look at another example of that in just a second. But hopefully you can see now what just a single line of code can do. So this next example, I'll run this one. And what I like about this one is when it runs, it's one list box. That's it. This what you're looking at here is a single list box. And then based on the style that you select here, it applies a style to the same list box with the same code and the same data applied to it. So let's take a look at some of those. So this is default. Let's go to simple. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. We, we've done things like this where you can see that for each item template here, we've probably got two columns. This first one here, we've bound it to the picture. Here we've bound it some text. Now remember, it's the same data getting bound here. We could also try columns. So you're looking a little bit better. But now remember, this, each one of these is an item. It just has a single item template applied to it. And so we can see where's the image and the text. And we've got these little brackets in between or we can have a more modern look to it. And so the idea that I'm getting trying to get across here is that your user interface should look very, very plain when you first create it. For example here, remember, this is the list box. That's it. This is our entire user interface that was actually defined. But if we go behind the scenes, what we see happens is, is okay, here's my item source. It goes to this class restaurants models. Let's go to that, go to definition. Here's just a list of restaurants. All right, it's just objects, right? So list of restaurant objects. We've done this a lot with like employees, for example, but it's just a class of a restaurant that has various pieces of data. And you can see that it's just, again, they've just initialized it with the data that we've seen. So if we go back now, what it does is, is when we switch the style, it says, okay, so which one did you select? All right, get that given style. So this is a method that they wrote and they say application.current.findResource and the key is just the name here and well that's a style I mean that's what it's returned as and so what it's doing is it's just saying hey apply whatever style is selected and we'll take a look at these styles in just a second so let's take a look let's run it again and let's go even crazier so let's say grid looks a little bit nicer how about float watch what happens here as I add more room these items can actually float and do this all just because a style was applied it's the exact same user interface you can see here's a map here's ratings here's scatter and so and then there's also 3d where you can actually slide through this little hokey but nonetheless I just wanted to show you that 
why it's so important to not hard code everything into our UI. So let's take a look at how they actually pulled this off. So they applied these given styles based on the drop down. So let's take a look at them. So for example, list simple. Well, in our apply style, you see application.current.findResource. Where are those resources at? Well, they're in our app.xaml file. And so what they do is they create this resource dictionary. And what it is, is this is a way of just, it's sort of like including all of these resources into our application. So that you can do something like this. You can get the resource in memory. And those resources are all of these styles over here that they created ahead of time. So you can see that they add in, for instance, you know, styles window black, They've that which is right here. They've done list simple. So that's one we, we looked at before. So let's take a look at list simple. So let's run it just to re refresh our memory. So here's the list simple. And we can see that it's just an image over here and then some text. Well, how'd they do that? Well, they just created a template. So we've got this template that's applied to our list box. And here's our item template. You can see it's a stack panel. And then we've got a rectangle that holds the logo. And then stacked with it is a label that's bound to the name of that object in our list. So again, just by applying this item template style to it, we can change this. Now let's go down to columns, for example. And let's come over to this one here. And so what they've done for columns is, they, again, they've created another item template. They just created a stack panel. And you can see that they've added in these rectangles and then another rectangle and then they've binded this label. And so each one of these, they've just created what they visually wanted to see. And so that just shows you the power that you can create in WPF. So why am I kind of showing you this is that, so when you generate your UIs, you need to keep this maintenance idea around for future development because you're going to want to change your UI. So generally the data doesn't change too much so you want to pull in the entire data the same way. It's just how you're going to style it. And so if from the very beginning you don't hard code all of those elements and use styles and controls then you can just change the the, the style sheets and you've got a refreshed user interface. Next thing I want to do is I want to just show you a little presentation here about UI design. And so I just want to go through these slides and hopefully they'll give you a better way that you can create your user interface. Because for me, I'm not very good at creating a pretty user interface. I'm very good at the back end, making sure that hard code work, not making something look pretty. So this presentation, if you're like me, can hopefully give you some ideas on how to style and make your UI look a little bit better. So what makes an effective UI? Well, how the user interacts with the program that really does go a lot to giving that user that first impression. It means a lot. I can't tell you how many times people have judged my application, the quality of the code behind it, just on how it looked on the user interface. I'm telling you that if you don't make your app look professional, no matter how great the code is in the background, they will judge it based on how it looks. Now this last bullet, I can't emphasize this one enough. Work with your users and try to make their job easier. Understand how they're going to use the application. Now, how they're going to use that application? Well, you need to organize the flow layout. Now, again, I get it that it's kind of an abstract little example here, but how many times have you been using the application and you cannot find the button or combo box or whatever it is to do the, the task you're trying to get done? So always think about this organization and the UI flow for your end users. Now, your end users don't know how the app is supposed to work. So make sure you're giving them clear instructions. You forgive their mistakes, like you know if they fat finger data into there, or if a text box is only expecting characters, well then don't even allow them to enter numbers. You know, highlight important areas, especially if they're, you know, if some an area needs attention. How will the UI be used? This one is major because you always need to think about where your application is going to be used. Is it a web application? Well, okay. Is it going to be used on mobiles? Is it on a tablet? Is it going to be used outdoors? Because outdoors may affect how you, what kind of colors and the font sizes and resolutions, all these sort of things. Do you have, um, so some applications you may control. So you know that it's going to be used on, you, know, you have a government contract and for this contract, your, 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 your program is going to be run on these 10 computers. 
you know the resolution then. You can define for that. But if it's a public application you're selling to the public, you don't know what sort of resolution that customer has. Therefore, you may need to create a more dynamic user interface. So some tools of the trade like Expression Blend or Photoshop, again, you may just want to familiarize with these other tools that are out there that may help you, you know, create your user interface. So Expression Blend, I have another lecture on Expression Blend if you want to go through that. Um, but again, it's just it's a little bit better than Visual Studio when dealing with UI elements and especially when you're dealing with animations. Um, vectors versus bitmap images. So vectors, what they are, they're essentially pictures, but they're defined. So you define paths. So you define exactly all the angles and triangles of how that vector is going to look. And what's nice about that is they're very fast and high quality, and you can and they can grow or they can shrink and they won't lose any resolution where images will. So if, if it's possible I would recommend using vector graphics in your applications. So different formats now for images. So again PNG if you want to use any sort of transparency I would use JPEG for photos. Um, again just kind of some basic stuff there. Working with colors I would recommend adding colors last. Uh, we kind of just looked at some resource dictionaries, how we want to include all of those resources there. Um, choose your colors, and, and especially the intensity, wisely. Again, it really does make a difference. And you may, again, what may look nice to you may not look nice to someone else. So I'm not going to go through each one of these, but I just want to kind of talk about how there are ideas about how color can actually affect us. So there's reasons, think about these different colors of blue for different color marketing. Green, you know, again, it means something to a lot of us, like a green light. You know, orange, again, corporate marketing, is it playful, it's informal, energizing, black, you know, give feedback, perspective, depth. Just sort of think through is all I really want you to bring up on these sort of colors here on why you're actually using the different colors into your application. So now let's talk about some color schemes. This one is the most helpful sort of part for me when choosing my user interface and how I'm going to color it. One scheme that I like to do is this monochromatic where you just use these different shades of like blue for example. And I'll show you some ideas on how to get colors like this um, from a tool. Here's another one. So analogous color scheme where you know you just pick and you can it'll give you the analogous colors, um, complementary, additive, split complementary, triadic. So this Adobe Color Wheel, if I actually go out to their website here, gives you a color wheel like this. Here's the website, and you can see that those different ones that we were just taking a look at, if I just use their color wheel. You can see now if I want certain different, this will give me now different shades of green and it'll give me the hex values for that. Or if I want, you know, some nice different blues, you can see that you can just kind of do this and it's just a way to help you pick maybe different blues to use throughout your application. So here's some of these other ones. You can see as I spin the wheel, you can kind of see I can go in and out and it just shows you that possibly this blue with this red may look good or this yellow. Again, just may spark some creativity in you. So or split complementary. Again, just, just different ways that you can work with the colors. Hopefully that helps you because it, it's something that I've used, especially with monochromatic, where I'll say, okay, I want these different shades of blue and you can add those in. Kind of gives you some nice, nice options for that. So working with gradients, this is one of the things about WPF that makes your applications look very professional with just changes and just the gradients. Rather than using just block colors like everything is just a solid red, if you kind of have a gradient, the real world works with gradients. So right now, wherever you're at, let, you know, look at a wall that's close by or you know something to that nature where there's some different lights and reflection. Now look at it. It's not just a solid color. Why? Because there's shadows. Certain parts of this wall are going to be slightly darker. Some are going to be slightly lighter. You know, maybe there's some. Maybe you have some pictures that have some shadows on the wall. Again, everything is done in, with gradients in the real world. When dealing with fonts, you really need to look at your application, understand your end users, and make sure those fonts are readable. The font families, the styles, different things like that. And you really want to put some good effort into what you use for your application. 
animations. This is really that the last thing you can do to add on to really give that polished user interface. You're going to want to use Expression Blend for that, but it really can clean up your application and make it look nice. For animations, though, make sure they're fairly short, and they're you want subtle and classy over flashy and fancy. One of the things I find is that once students start playing with animations, they just go really overboard with them. And that's fine. If you're going to do something like that in our class, well, that's exactly the time you want to do it. Again, they may not look professional, but you're learning from that. But in the real world, you want very short, almost to where the user doesn't even know those animations are happening. For example, look at your phone and open up you know applications and and go through them and actually pay attention to how you know windows within a application transition for one another and those animations and how those look again here need proof look at the iphone or android just look at how those animations are done let's take move on here on styling basics so styles we've kind of looked at in some of our other lectures but we really, really want to spend some time up front thinking about how styles are going to be applied through your application. So now, with our styles in WPF, we always want to make sure that we define all of our styles as resources. So everything that's a color or background, we want to include those as styles. We don't want to hard code those for our individual applications. Or put them, you know, for instance, a button, you wouldn't want to hard code those. So these resource dictionaries, we, we looked at these previously in our app.xaml file. We want to add these resource dictionaries. They're essentially libraries. And they're used so we can skin our application, we can pull in so that we can grab those resources anytime we want. Now with our resources, they can be either st static or dynamic. Most of the time I use static, but if you ever do have to have them where they're reapplied so they may be changing dynamically at runtime, then you'd want to use dynamic resources versus static. Best, pra best practices, again, you always want to make sure you put your resources in resource dictionaries. Avoid putting your resources directly into the app.xaml because it just grows so large. It's better to put them in their own file and then just include that resource in your app.xaml. Um, again, don't put your resources in your user files or your windows. You want to put them you know, in separate files. Again, colors, fonts, all of those things need to be resource dictionaries instead of hard coding. So styles, we can think of them just like cascading style sheets and HTML, but they're a lot more powerful in WPF. Always begin with your styles and start thinking, okay, how do I want this color? How do I want to style this button? How do I want to style this text box, et cetera, et cetera, all these controls. Now that may be pretty daunting and there's websites out there that will sell you styles. So they've already created these professional styles for you that you can apply later on. Now, controls in WPF are what are called lookless. And that means there's no visual elements by default to a control. The only reason a button or text box look the way they do is because they've had a default style and control applied to them. And if, if you look at the um, Expression Blend lecture, you can see where I've actually edit um, styles and controls via Expression Blend. So golden rule, always define as little in the XAML files. You've heard me say this um, several times. But again, I just can't drill that enough that don't hard code that into your UI. So templates by, are a little bit different than styles where templates are actually what make up the visual part of our elements. So like it's saying here where a button is composed of various rectangle and content presenter elements. But you can change that. You could, or list box. We saw we just looked at that list box example on how we could define what it means to be the template for a list box, and it completely changes how that's going to look. So that's this UI lecture for today. Hopefully, it kind of gives you some of the basics that you can sort of apply to your own applications.